This is our Aeromarine 321 epoxy resin kit. This is our most popular epoxy and with good reason. Today I'm going to show you some best practices when using this product. So one of the most common uses for the epoxy is as a coating. It's a very thin epoxy so it coats, flows, evens out very well. Um, examples of coatings, are the most common is a, uh, a bar top or a countertop or any fine piece of wood that you want to coat. Today we're going to be doing an example with, with a piece of African babinga. Um, it's normally a very red type wood. You can see it here. You can see it here as well. The first step in doing this to ensure that you can get a solid continuous pour is to build a dam around the perimeter. And there are many ways to do that, but the easiest and simplest way to do it is simply to do it with tape. So you can use, in a small case like this, standard blue tape. If it is a large countertop or bar top and you're worried about it um, leaking around the perimeters, then uh, you can use duct tape. Uh, the epoxy will not bond to either one of them. You'll notice that the tape extends above the surface of the material. Um, the height is really as irrelevant as long as it's higher than the thickness of the coating that you plan to put on this. I'm going to probably do this between one eighth and one quarter of an inch today so you can see that there's ample um, working room on that. And uh, if your surface or if you're using duct tape, this surface is smooth enough you can get by with uh, one piece of tape. but what I'm going to do is run two and then fold the bottom of the second piece underneath. You can see the height of the dam here. The purpose of the dam again is to allow you to pour the epoxy onto the top of the surface without it going past the edges. You'll notice that on the back side, the lip down here, I take and fold over. So when you're finished, you want to ensure that you have a solid seam everywhere around here because the epoxy will seep through virtually anything. And once we're done, we're going to prime the corner in here with epoxy. If you have any cracks in the wood or seams in the wood where you've joined two pieces of wood together but they're not glued together, those seams need to be primed as well. You prime the epoxy, you prime the, the substrate the day before and let it cure overnight. The reason for that is that the epoxy will seep into the seam only a small distance and cure and then basically keep any, any leaks from happening the next day when you do your first actual pour. So what I have here is a little pre-mixed epoxy. Okay, this is perfect for priming. And all that's required is a very simple, thin coat. Again, the reason that you're doing this is to uh, allow the epoxy to uh, seep into any crevices where it might leak when you do your, your first pour. Um, if you only put a small amount of epoxy on the uh, work surface, uh, there's no pressure behind it. It won't continue to uh, leak through any seams that it finds. And um, if it's not leaking through a seam, then it's not creating air bubbles. As I mentioned, this particular piece of wood has a very small crack in the wood. It extends all the way over to here. That hairline crack will cause bubbles in the final pour or in the, origin the first pour tomorrow. So what I'm going to do is make sure that I get a coating all the way across that, like this. Okay, it's complete. We're going to wait 24 hours now and start our first pour tomorrow. The prime coat on the um, uh, Babinga from yesterday is now cured. And we have a uh, properly mixed uh, batch of um, 321 epoxy resin. Uh, this was mixed using the double mix and pour method which is described on our website in a specific video. Um, 
when you mix the epoxy, uh, you almost always will end up with bubbles in the epoxy from the mixture. When you pour the epoxy onto the substrate, those bubbles need to be removed. We're going to show you how to do that using a heat gun. You'll notice that I stopped pouring um, before the epoxy had completely coated the, um, the project because I don't want it that thick quite yet. I want a very thin layer um, for this particular pour. I could do it like that, uh, but it's a lot easier to fix small mistakes than it is to fix big mistakes. The epoxy is self-leveling, so it doesn't matter what it looks like while I'm doing this right now. I'm getting it to... Uh, spread out fairly evenly and then I'm going to leave it alone and it will uh, level out by itself. The purpose of the heat gun is twofold. One, we want to slightly warm the epoxy to reduce its viscosity. Two, to slightly agitate the surface tension so that the bubble will break through it. Um, the proper way to do it is by gently moving the heat gun back and forth across the top of the epoxy. You do not want to hold the heat gun in one spot and steam the epoxy. You want to just slowly move it back and forth. As you do this, you'll see the bubbles just completely disappear. You'll notice, you'll notice that some of the bubbles won't immediately break. That means that they are still rising to the surface. All you need to do is be patient, give it a few seconds, try again, and you'll be able to remove them. You're going to continue this process until most of the bubbles have been eliminated. Um, you need to then pause for a few minutes, let the epoxy settle, let the bubbles continue to rise to the surface. When you're done, you'll have a small number of microfine bubbles left in the surface. Give it a few minutes, run the heat gun over that again, and you're done. Cover the work so that you don't get uh, dust or anything in it. Um, make sure that you're working in an environment where you have no moving air, very little dust. The heat gun that you're using needs to be a heat gun, not a dryer. You don't want a high velocity uh, uh, column of air moving across the epoxy. It's simply going to blow the epoxy off of the top of the surface. You want a heat gun on a low setting. When you're done, you have a piece of wood, a surface, that looks like this. You can see that this is a very high gloss, very high gloss finish on it, very durable finish, very beautiful furniture grade piece of, uh, of wood here. Um, this again is the uh, Air Marine 321 epoxy resin kit. This is uh, good for a variety of uses. It's the most versatile and popular epoxy that we have. You can purchase this on our website at airmarineproducts.com.